This is a rather long and twisted story about how Texas went from Spain to Mexico to its own country of, called Texas, and then to the United States. It's kind of this long story that has lots of twists and turns, but eventually causing the United States to grow even larger. The story all begins um, with U.S. settlers wanting to move into Texas. In 1820, the area that we now call Texas was part of Spain. The Spanish governor gave some people in the United States permission to move into Texas and start to settle in Spain. So this was all done by the Spanish governor. The guy's name was Moses Austin, who originally got permission. Unfortunately, sh shortly after the Spanish governor allows people to move into Texas, there was a rebellion. Mexico gets its independence from Spain, and now Texas is no longer part of Spain. It is now part of Mexico. Because Spain had already made this treaty with the United States and letting people move in, Spain decides, well, might as well just let this treaty stand. No reason to get rid of it. Stephen Austin, who is the son of Moses, Moses meets an unfortunate death in this time period before he's able to actually fulfill the treaty. So his son, his son, Stephen Austin, leads the first 300 settlers into Texas. And as part of the agreement, Austin and the rest of his group of 300 have to agree to follow the laws of Mexico, which includes worshiping the Catholic Church. That will become important later on in the story. So after Austin and his original group move in, there is just this fever for more land. As we saw earlier, the cotton gin um, causes cotton production to become increasingly popular. People want to move into Texas, grow cotton, make tons of money. So all these people move into Texas following Austin. Many of these people are Protestant. They're not Catholic, and they refuse to follow the Texas law or the Mexican law requiring people to be Catholic. These new settlers also, as I mentioned, bring slaves into Texas because they want to grow cotton. Well, Mexico had a law against slavery as well. So Mexico's getting pretty mad about this. They don't want these Americans moving into their land and breaking their laws. So in 1830, Mexico banned all American settlement and said, no more settlers, you guys are crazy, you're not following our laws. It's enough of this, no more settlers. Now, Mexico tries to enforce these laws about slavery and religion, but are unable to do so. Mexico is trying to stop people from moving in, but they can't do it. Eventually, Mexico even starts to tax American products just because they're so mad at the United States. But they really can't control any of this because there's just so many people moving into Texas. So all these people are from America are moving into Texas. Pretty soon, the Americans outnumber the Mexicans in Texas. The guy who takes over power in Mexico, his name is Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, or just Santa Ana for short. He soon declares himself dictator of Mexico. The United States citizens living in, in Texas, along with people called Tejanos, which are Mexican-born Texans who kind of side with the United States, they don't like the fact that Santa Ana is making himself a dictator. They don't like that they have to follow these Mexican laws, and they outnumber the, the, Tex the Mexicans in Texas. So in 1836, led by Stephen Austin, Texas declares independence from Mexico. Mexico. They write their own Declaration of Independence, as seen here. Um, just like it's very similar to the one that was written to England in 1776, this one written to declare Texas a free country, an independent country. So after the Declaration of Independence of Texas was written, there is a, a war. Mexico fights Texas to keep it as part of Mexico. Um, Santa Ana sends troops to Texas. Um, there was one very famous battle at the Alamo, and there was a case where there was only a few... American soldiers in Tejanos, 185, um, in the fort called the Alamo, which is pictured here. It's in San Antonio. And the whole Mexican army is trying to take this fort, and 185 Texans in Tejanos are defending the fort. They hold out for 12 days, brave. They know they're going to be outnumbered. They all know they're going to die, but they keep fighting anyway. They last almost two weeks defending this fort before they're overcome by the Mexican army, and they're either killed in battle or executed after the battle. Davy Crockett was in that battle and killed as well. Um, following this famous battle at the Alamo that the United States loses, the bravery shown by the soldiers in the Alamo inspires other people in Texas to fight harder and stronger. Sam Houston leads a famous small group of people against Santa Ana, surprises him, captures him. They're all chanting, remember the Alamo, is their battle cry as they finally beat Santa Ana. And once Santa Ana is captured by Sam Houston and the Texans, um, they force Mexico to sign a treaty giving Texas its independence. Now, Texas 
is its own country at that point, not part of the United States. Um, Sam Houston is elected president. Um, the due to the due to the fact that Texas has slaves, many people in the United States fear adding it as a country because it might disrupt the balance, add more slave states into the country. That's becoming a, a tricky thing in, in the 1830s. So Texas stays its own country for about 10 years, even though they want to become part of the United States. So the Republic of Texas is what it's called, and it is its own country. It's not Mexico, it's not the United States, it's kind of in between. You can see it right here in yellow. Finally, after about 10 years of be being its own country, um, President Polk in 1845 negotiates this treaty that makes Oregon, we'll be learning about Oregon ne in our next video, this here, they negotiate a treaty line with England, which England takes the north part of it, and the United States takes the south part of it. This eases some people's fears because they know that Oregon's going to become a state. So they allow Texas to be part of the state uh, of the United States. In exchange, Oregon is going to become part of the United States too. So at least you have one northern free state and one southern slave state being added to the country at the same time. Now, the fact that the United States adds Texas as a state further is going to upset Mexico. And in a future video, we're going to learn about a, another war that's going to happen between the United States this time and Mexico called the Mexican-American War, where the rest of the United States, this little gray part here, will be added to the country. But for right now, the, the Texas story, in 1845, Texas becomes a state and all this area in pink is added to the United States. And now the United States is going to stretch from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast in Oregon um, and even into the South here in Texas. The only part they don't yet still have is that gray part in Mexico. And here's the map a little bit closer here. You can see this is what the United States looks like after adding Texas in 1846. So, to conclude, the United States citizens begin to settle Spanish Texas, which was Spain back then in the 1820s. Once Mexico wins its independence from Spain, um, it's not longer Spanish Texas, but Mexican Texas. The more and more U.S. settlers go into Texas, they don't follow Mexican laws about religion and slavery, and soon there is tension between United States settlers and Mexican government, and the United States settlers in Texas write a declaration of independence from Mexico. In order to keep Texas as part of Mexico, Santa Ana begins a war. Sam Houston's able to defeat him, and the whole famous battle cry, Remember the Alamo, was born in this battle between Texas and Mexico. Ten years after winning independence, Texas is added to the United States, along with Oregon, as a balance of slave and free states. And the big thing you got to know about this is, in our growing nation unit, the United States grows quite a bit by adding Texas. And it all happens because Texas was able to win its independence from Mexico and become its own country before being added to the United States.